Number one says the table shows the results from a survey that asked 100 adults um, if they had a high school diploma and if their annual income was more than $30,000. So if a person who took the survey is selected at random, what is the probability that that person has a high school diploma and makes $30,000 or less? Um, and so if we take a look at the table, where are the people with a high school diploma are here. And then we also want um, this person to make $30,000 or less, which would be here. In this case, it's and, so it's and, and that means that we would select where both of these things are happening. The person has a high school diploma and $30,000 or less. So that is 21 people out of the 100 surveyed. So the probability that somebody would be selected that meets those stipulations would be 0.21. Um, and then what is the probability that the person has no high school diploma and makes more than $30,000? So in this one, our stipulations are no high school diploma, which is here, and that they earn more than $30,000. So more than $30,000 is here. It's an and again. So we want where both of these things are happening. So there are two people out of the 100 surveyed that both have no high school diploma and are making more than 30,000. So divide two by 100 and you get that the probability of that happening is 0 0.02. Number two, um, this table shows the data from a science, ex science fair experiment that studied the number of eggs that hatched at three different temperatures. What percentage of these eggs hatched? So we wanna take a look at how many eggs hatched, which is here, and we need to total these up. So we will do six plus 14, which is 20, plus 23, which is 43. And then we need to get the total number of eggs. So let's add up the not hatched. 19 plus 11 is 30, plus two is 32. So this gives us a total of 75 eggs in this experiment. 43 of those eggs hatched out of 75. If we divide that down, we get 0.57, um, and this wanted a percentage, so we'll multiply by 100, and we get approximately 57% of the eggs in this experiment hatched. Um, part B says, what percentage of the eggs that were at the cool temperature, so now we're looking at eggs that were at the cool temperature only, so I'm going to delete this. So what percentage of eggs at the cool temperature hatched? So now we are only looking at cool temperature eggs and which ones hatched. So we have six out of, and there was 25 total here. Six plus 19 gives us 25. And so six divided by... Um, 25 gives us 0.24, which as a percent is 24%. Part C, what percentage of eggs were not at room temperature? So now we want eggs that are just not at room temperature. So room temperature is this middle column. So not room temperature are the cool and the warm eggs. And we're just looking at the total eggs that were not at room temperature. So how many were in the cool temperature? 25. How many are in the warm temperature? 25. So how many eggs are not at room temperature is 50 out of the total eggs, remember, was 75. So 50 out of 75 are not at room temperature. That decimal is 0.33. And that percent, when we multiply by 100, is 33% of eggs. Part D says... What percentage of the eggs were at the warm temperature and did not hatch? Okay, so now we're looking at all of these eggs up here, and we want to find the ones that were at the warm temperature and didn't hatch. Okay, so not hatched and at the warm temperature. And that's going to be two of our eggs. So two of these eggs were not hatched and at the warm temperature out of the total of 75 eggs. 
and that um, when you divide it down is 0 0.03 multiplied by 100 is about 3%. Number three says that we've got a table of information showing the survey results of heartbeat um, and people living below, above or below 10,000 feet. And there's 50 people total in this survey. The first thing that we want to do is create a two-way table that shows the relative frequency, okay, which is basically how often did it happen? What percent of the time did it happen in this survey? And so I just copied um, this survey down here and I'm gonna delete out the numbers. And what you wanna do is just figure out the, pers or the, the probability that it happened in this survey or the relative frequency means to divide each of these by 50, okay? So this one happened three out of 50 times, which is 0.06. 19 out of 50 is 0.38, 16 out of 50 is 0.32, and 12 out of 50 is 0.24. Okay, these are kind of each of the um, different things that happen, and then these are the totals. So 22 out of 50 is 0.44, that's the total of, of um, people above 10,000 feet. The total of people below 10,000 feet is 28 out of 50, or 0.56. The total um, below 80 beats per minute is 19 divided by 50 or 0.38. Um, the total above 80 beats per minute is 31 divided by 50 or 0.62. Um, and then the total people in the survey is 50, which divided by 50 is 1. So now we can use these to help us with the probabilities since these are the relative frequencies would help us, which would help us estimate what the, what the probability is. So what is the probability that a person surveyed at ran, or surveyed and selected at random has a heart rate above 80 or lives at 10,000 feet? Okay, so heart rate above 80 beats per minute. Here are the people above 80 beats per minute, okay? or lives above 10,000 feet. So they can either be in here or they can be above 10,000 feet. So then we would just add these together. These would be the three parts of the survey that would um, be either eight above 80 or above 10,000 feet. So we'd have um, 0.6 plus 0.38 plus 0.24. And that would get us a total of um, 0.68 for the relative frequency or the probability that we would choose somebody that meets those characteristics. Um, for part C, it's saying what's the probability that the person surveyed and selected at random has a heart rate above 80 beats per minute and lives above 10,000 feet. Okay, so survey selected at random um, heart rate above, so let me get those back on there. Okay, so above 80 beats per minute and above 10,000 feet, but now this time it's and. So now we only want where they are both happening. So where they're both above 10,000 feet and above 80 beats per minute, and that's our 0.38 versus this one wanted or. So as long as they were one or the other or both, they worked. This one we only want where it's both. Number four, list all possible outcomes of spinning a spinner and rolling a fair number cube. So remember, a fair number cube has the numbers one through six on it. And so you can do this how you want. If you want to do a tree diagram, a table, an ordered, an organized list, I like to do organized list. So I'm going to do X with each of the numbers. So X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, and X6. Then I'm going to do Y with each of them. Okay, so Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, and Y6. And then Z with all of them. So Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5, and Z6. So you could certainly do um, a table. 
okay, where you write X, Y, Z on one side, one, two, three, four, five, six on the other rows and columns. Um, you could list out a tree. So put X with each of the six and then Y with each of the six and Z, however you prefer. Number five, a student flips a fair coin. Okay, so remember that a fair coin has the um, options of getting a heads or a tails and then spins the spinner. How would you find the sample space? So this one's just asking, how would you? So you could explain how you would do your table or your tree or your ordered list. Um, but by listing um, each outcome, So heads with each letter, and then you could say each letter X, Y, W, Z, and tails with each letter. Okay, or something similar to that. Um, but then getting H with all four and then the tails with all four options, giving you a total of eight outcomes. Number six, select all words for which the probability of selecting the letter A at random is one fourth. So let's count the number of A's in the word out of the total letters. So in this first one, it's two out of four, which is one half. So that's not one fourth. B is 1A out of four letters, so that one is one-fourth. C, you have 1A out of five letters, so not one-fourth. D, you have two A's out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. Two out of eight simplifies to one-fourth. And in E, you have one, two, three A's out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. That does not simplify to one fourth, so that one would not work. Number seven, on an assignment, there are two multiple choice questions with four answer choices each. You have no idea what the correct answer is to either one, so you guess. What's the probability that you get both of them right by guessing? Explain your answer. So you could do some different things here, like writing out the sample space. So we've got two questions. Okay, you've got four answer choices. So maybe we just say A, B, C, and D for the first one, A, B, C, and D for the second one. You can list them all out. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to actually write out the sample space. So if, if, if I chose the first one, if my first question I chose A, I could choose A, B, C, and D for the second one. So I'm just going to write those out. So I chose A for the first, A for the second, A for the first, B for the second, A for the first, C for the second, and A for the first, D for the second. Another option would be to choose B on the first question with each of those others. Okay, C on the first question or D on the first question. So I'm just going to write out my sample space here. So if I chose B first, I could have chosen it with A, B, C, or D for the second question. If I chose C first, I could have still chosen A, B, C, or D for the second. And similar with D. So here's my whole sample space. So what is the probability that you get both of them right by guessing? So both of them right, there's only one possible place where you have both of them right. So if we just said AA was the um, correct answer, so getting both of them correct, you have a 1 out of 16 chance. So what's the probability that you get exactly one correct? Not both, but exactly one. So still thinking that AA is the correct answer. So this would be both of them correct. Here would have one correct. This one has the first one as an A, first one as an A, first one as an A. So this would have one. We could also get the second one as an A. Okay, so these ones would all be correct, have exactly one correct, right? And then this one had both, so that one doesn't count. None of these have A's in them, so they wouldn't have anything correct. 
So we can see here that we have one, two, three, four, five, six out of 16 choices would give us exactly one correct. This would simplify um, to th a three out of eight chance. Number eight, um, here are two circles. The smaller circle has um, lowercase radius, lowercase diameter, lowercase circumference. The larger one is in capital letters and there's a scale factor connecting them of K. So using these two circles, match the ratios um, with their values. So if we do the circumference divided by circumference, a so larger circumference by smaller circumference and larger radius by smaller radius, what would they be equal to? So those are comparing corresponding lengths. They're going to simplify down to the scale factor. Okay, so these are going to simplify down to K. If we do the circumference divided by the diameter in the large circle compared to the circumference divided by the diameter in the small circle, that always is going to be pi no matter what the circles are. And you can see that when you look at the circumference formula of circumference equals pi times diameter. So if we divide by diameter, circumference divided by diameter is equal to pi no matter what the numbers are. And then if we divide a diameter by a, by a radius in the same circle, the diameter is always two times bigger than the radius. So if we do diameter divided by radius, that's always going to simplify down to two. Number 